Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Xbox On. And 2019 has just been an insane year for gaming. So we thought we'd take a look at some of the best games of 2019. Yeah! Rest in pieces. Without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite game of 2019 had to be the blockbuster sequel that was Gears 5. Now, it dropped the of war, but it still had more Gears content in it than any other Gears game at all. I loved it for a couple of reasons. The single player was fantastic. And also, for the first time, we actually saw some open world gaming with that. Now, the second thing that I personally love is the multiplayer. Now, the multiplayer, I must say, Gears 5 brought in the arcade game mode, which actually might be the most fun that I've ever had in a multiplayer shooter. We also had Escape, which was a brand new mode added to the game. It actually had a map editor. We've never seen that in a Gears game before. So you could build your perfect Gears scenario. You could build the amount of cover that you wanted, the amount of grenades you wanted, the amount of juvies that you wanted. I think this is the most beautiful Gears game ever made. And let's not forget, for the first time, I was able to murder people with a Lancer as the Terminator. Game of the year. Being pressed for an answer, be either a toss-up between Resident Evil 2 Remastered or The Outer Worlds, just because Resident Evil 2 Remastered, I was so impressed with how they managed to revitalize that game, bring it up to modern standards and make it still feel like it was a brand new release that no one had ever seen before. Whereas with The Outer Worlds, I really found quite a good connection with so many of those characters and seeing their kind of different storylines and the ways that they express themselves as well. And I thought some of the performances given in that were absolutely amazing. If I had to split between those two, I'd probably go for The Outer Worlds actually though, just because the fact I could play it both on my PC and on my Xbox whenever I wanted to. I just kept replaying it over and over again and then just connected with that game on quite a few different levels. It's Apex Legends. Like, what's not to love? 60 players dropped into a battle royale. We've had multiple seasons this year, bringing new legends, new items, new weapons, and it's just been one of the most enjoyable games for me in 2019. My best game of 2019 has probably got to be Untitled Goose Game. It was a completely out of left field, unexpected delight that just came out of nowhere and surprised everybody. It's really simple, it's really basic, everybody can get it. The only mechanic really you can grab and you can honk. <laughs> and that makes it really easy because it makes the whole world your playground. It's not a case of having to do things correctly or within the time frame. It's just a case of having to do things at your leisure, figure out what the objective should be in your head rather than what the game's telling you to do and just having fun with it. At the beginning of this year, this game didn't exist and out of nowhere, Borderlands 3 got announced. Uh, me and Leah got to go to LA to see some exclusives. I played at every single event I could ever since the announcement and it came out it, towards the end of summer. I absolutely demolished it, got to level 50 as soon as I could. The Halloween spook bloody harvest festival was absolutely fantastic. And at the time of filming this, the new DLC comes out in two days and I'm so excited. Something that really surprised me was actually probably the announcement and then how fun uh, LEGO Speed Champions was for the Forza Horizon 4 DLCs. I'm I'm a big fan of Lego and seeing the way that they just kind of really authentically delivered a Lego experience within Forza, that was just actually really amazing. You know, seeing all the, you know, hearing the brick sounds when they get smashed apart, seeing the like Speed Champions race, uh, race car sets and how uh, authentically they were kind of recreated in the game. And it was just a lot of fun really just smashing bricks apart and, you know, building up your little house as well. Like surprise releases, it, it kind of goes back to my favorite game of 2019 and it's Apex Legends. No one saw it coming. There was no mention of it. Everyone thought that Respawn was working on a different title and then boom. Apex Legends, I think, I mean, I think it surprised everybody. <laughs> it was another game out of left field. It just came in and it not it revolutionized the battle royale genre. I mean, the fact with Apex Legends that you could mark other players and enemies inside the game, you could talk to your team without having to talk. I mean, as somebody who's quite introverted, that was a godsend. I loved that. The game that surprised me most this year was actually Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I did not expect it to be a sort of Sekiro Souls style game where obviously it's not as hard as any of those titles, but it had the same mechanics. I was not expecting that at all. So it was a big win for me actually, because I'm still playing it and loving it now. I want to be a fly on the wall in Epic Games when they come up with the next big thing that Fortnite are going to do because everything they do is a surprise. Whether you like the game or not, Fortnite is a game everyone should be watching and learning from. Best multiplayer game, I have to say, Apex Legends. The game came out of nowhere at the start of this year in February and ever since then, Benny and I have just been relentlessly playing it every week and we will be for the rest of our lives. 
This is really embarrassing. In 2019, I started playing Minecraft for the very first time. And it's also the 10 year anniversary this year. And I'm sorry it took me this long, but I got into Minecraft. You could just go on for like 30 minutes, build a house and be like, thanks mate, I'll speak to you next week. I hope you're all right. It's just great. Apex Legends, again, it has to be for best multiplayer because it just, it came in and suddenly everyone wanted to play it. Apex is up there, of course, but I think two of the others that really stand out for me are Modern Warfare because I think Infinity Ward have done a great job in bringing like an overall, like one of the ultimate multiplayer experiences from 2v2 gunfights to competitive six player maps to like their huge ground war maps. I think they've done a brilliant job with that. I'm also just a sucker for FIFA. Every single year I'm there like getting on ultimate team, trying to build the greatest team that I can and beat Sam, which doesn't always go to plan, but sometimes recently this game has been going quite well for me. So love FIFA, love Modern Warfare and Apex. I know you asked for one, but yeah, I cheated. Deal with it. I find you know, multiplayer and co-op games to be obviously a bit more of a social experience and Destiny 2 delivers on that in so many different ways because it has so many activities that you can enjoy with your friends. Uh, whether there are friends that prefer PvE or PvP, there's just so much going on in that game. So jumping back into that with uh, the release of their latest expansion, Shadowkeep, was just quite refreshing and a fun way for me to reconnect with some friends that I hadn't really played any games with for quite a while. It's Shadow Keep finally here. It's Shadow, I thought you were it's doing like Shadow Keep. keep. It's, it's Shadow Keep. <laughs> oh, this is an easy one to answer. My favorite idea Xbox title has to be the little known title known as After Party. Now, it was made by the same people as Oxen Free, and I'll tell you the plot of the game so you get a gist of it, right? You are two people who have been killed or have died, and you are sent to hell, and you sort of think it might be a mistake. So what you do is you investigate why you're dead, and it turns out that actually to get back to life, you know, away from the underworld, you have to outdrink Satan. Now, I've never heard of a game with a storyline like that before, and as soon as I did, I had to go and play it. Now, we've played it on stream before, I'm continuing to play it now. The dialogue on it is the best I've ever experienced in a game. Amazing, amazing idea Xbox title, and it's in Game Pass. Supermarket Shriek was a really random game that was really fun for like families and just younger people as well because it's it's kind of cooperative, it's a little bit loud and I don't know, I enjoyed the heck out of it. I think one of the funnest ID Xbox games that really stood out for me this, this year is Supermarket Shriek because I got to play it at a early hands-on event and just fell in love with it. It's so much fun, especially if you like play on the microphones with someone else and you're just like screaming down the mic just to try and get the fastest times. I think Benny and I enjoy a lot of yelling when we play games. I mean, I I think the whole team does, let's face it. But <laughs> I think it it can it really appeals to Benny's competitive side and his side that likes to yell. So I think that makes sense. Untitled Goose Game. It's so ID, it doesn't even have a proper title. You literally play as an annoying goose. The game that started off on the internet as a GIF that then went viral and everyone went crazy about. To me, it's the epitome of an ID game, right? You get a dumb idea, you get a bunch of creative people, you make it all and then you release it and everyone goes crazy for it. And the fact that Untitled Goose Game was added this month to Xbox Game Pass means you are not allowed to miss it anymore. One that really stood out for me was The Gardens Between. And it's just got this beautiful way of presenting like this rotating diorama. The visuals are just so eye-catching. And it tells quite a beautiful story as well about two friends who are sort of moving apart but manage to remember all these amazing memories they had together. Yeah, it's just something quite beautiful, quite, you know, relaxed and casual, but quite a nice game to sort of stick on and just enjoy the evening with. The best story game of 2019. Now, I'm gonna have to go with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I think I've just become a Respawn fanboy this year, but the Star Wars is just one of those franchises that everyone has fallen in love with since they were a kid. And like, I remember playing like The Phantom Menace um, uh, as one well, of the first kind of single player games that I played when I was younger and getting to go and play Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is insane, like dual wield lightsabers, this kind of like cutting down the opponents, so the fights that you get to do, just kind of like meaty lightsaber combat, and the story is awesome as well. Uh, so I'll have to go for that one. So I think one of my best story games this year was Sea of Solitude, because that was, uh, it was kind of like an under the radar game, but it was beautiful. It was a really gorgeous game, and it was from a German studio. And it just, it tackled a lot of really difficult issues like mental health, and it did it in a way that was really interesting. And I think for a lot of people, if you're, you know, quietly struggling, you can help identify with those kind of things. So I really enjoyed that game. A game that definitely has a special place in my heart now, of course, is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The fact that we got to play it at XO19 on the main stage in front of a few people was just 
absolutely crazy. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. I love everything to do with it, whether it's the films, whether it's books, TV shows, you name it. I absolutely love Star Wars stuff. And Jedi Fallen Order was just an incredible experience. Maybe it will help me get better at games like Dark Souls and The Surge 2, but you know, it's just incredible to finally wield a lightsaber in such an acrobatic and creative way and exploring all those new worlds that they delivered. So yeah, Respawn and EA totally killed it with that. I really enjoyed playing After Party. It's really good, the characters are really, really compelling and I found myself, I was just sit for hours and I'll be completely engrossed in it. And if you've ever met me, my attention is diverted quite a lot. More often than not, I'm watching a TV program or playing a game, but After Party just had me, it was amazing. Scary games, uh, I, I try, like, I'm not gonna lie, I tried to avoid scary games when I can, but um, we actually streamed one over on mix.com forward slash Xbox on, uh, which was Man and Medan, which was brilliant. And like, it, it had me freaking out throughout the entire stream. I did actually have fun playing Man and Medan with Charlie. We completed the whole game. Never, it's an interesting mechanical game where two people can play at once and your actions sort of influence the other person's. It didn't do any good for my heart rate because it was through the ceiling most of the time. Actually, not quite as much as Charlie's, but it was a brilliant game to play, actually. I thought it looked really good. Bit of an underdog for me in that area, but as far as a big scaredy cat like me goes, I loved it. Man of Medan. Me and Sam did a couple streams of this where we were wearing heart rate monitors and you saw how horrific my heart rate got. <laughs> Charlie doesn't like scary games and I didn't like that one. So we played, I mean, Blair Witch and Man of Medan, and I think for the fear factor, Man of Medan was probably scarier, just because it had all those jump scares, and also it was that fear, especially when you're streaming it, that every single choice you're making is the wrong choice, <laughs> which we found out as we killed two of the main characters. I will never forgive Leah for killing Sean Ashmore. I feel very bad for Sean Ashmore. Uh, Benny and I massacred him brutally. Sorry, Sean. Single rat, reveal yourself! There he is. <laughs> The fact that Sam did the single rat reveal yourself joke because he knew there was a rat jump scare behind the curtain, but forgetting about the giant decapitated head that would then fall out neath the rat after neath. I can't even, it was so funny. It was absolutely ridiculous. And he screamed like a child. He actually screamed like a child. <laughs> Managed to dodge the Blair Witch, which is probably one of the scariest Xbox games that released this year, but uh, Resident Evil 2 is probably the probably the scariest one I played, although after a while, when you get a bit more comfortable with the guns, you, you kind of lose a bit of that scare factor, but you know, nothing quite compares to Mr. X just bursting through out of nowhere. You just hear those footsteps and you know you are in trouble. Best battle royale of the year. Well, oh God, there's so many to pick from. Um, uh, let me think, let me think. I think it's Apex Legends. Now, it, it, I might be biased, just, just a little bit, but I've played it a lot, and I don't think any other Battle Royale stands up against it. It's easy. It added a lot of really interesting things to the game mode in general that just made it fast paced, it made it fun, it made you want to keep jumping into it, and it made it feel a lot less sweaty than other Battle Royale games. It made you feel like you kind of had a bit more of a chance, so definitely my favorite Battle Royale this year. I've already spoken about Apex Legends, amazing game, came out of nowhere, Benny and I are rinsing it, but I do really like what Epic have done with Fortnite Chapter 2. It simplified the game back down to its roots. Now, that's probably intentional so they can build it back up over the next few seasons, but I quite like that they were able to be brave enough just to simplify the game, take it back to the roots a little bit, fresh new map, the graphics are good, the way that it integrates with all the progression systems are fantastic. So when I'm not playing Apex, I'm probably playing Fortnite. Probably my favorite Battle Royale of all time will always remain PUBG. I just feel like that's the authentic experience. That is the core, you know, Battle Royale gameplay loop that you come to love. And everything has kind of taken a bit of inspiration from PUBG. And that's why I think it always remains at the, you know, top of the mountain. Oh, the best Battle Royale game has to be Forza Horizon 4. Obviously, I'm sure Benny said Apex. I'm sure Leah said COD. I don't care. It's all about Forza. I play Forza nonstop. And the fact that I can now be just as good as them in Battle Royale Hours, but with my driving abilities when I'm not crashing into trees means that it is now the best battle royale in the entire world. It's enabled me to be champion. So thank you very much for that playground. I guess there could only be one game to choose from for the one that's been the toughest for me to handle and that was probably The Surge 2. People that tune into our Mixer stream probably remember that I might have had a bit of trouble 
uh, with that game, but I'm not typically very good at those kind of hack and slash Souls-like games, but yeah, the Surge 2 was a huge challenge. One that I started to get a bit better at as the stream went on, but yeah, I mean, nearly 40 deaths in one stream isn't, isn't great. Hardest game I've played, without a shadow of a doubt, the easiest answer I'll give today is Sekiro. <laughs> Uh, hardest game is a no-brainer, that would be Sekiro, full stop. Sekiro Sekiro was absolutely one of the most challenging game experiences I've ever had. It was too challenging for me. I remember giving Sam the controller and we spent the best part of two hours on a stream trying to defeat what we thought was a boss. It was not a boss, it was the dude before the boss, before the boss and we could do it. So that sort of sums up my experience with that game, doesn't it? Look, I know this might be a cop out to a lot of people, but hardest game in 2019, Modern Warfare. Like, I'm sorry, what's happening? Why is everyone hiding in buildings? It's, it, it's, people don't play it like Call of Duty. It's everyone's like kind of camping and hiding. Um, so I think that's been quite hard because it's been like a transition of play style. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a cop out, but. I think that's what I'm going to go with. So the best free update for me has to go to Fortnite. I know a lot of people go, Ugh, but Fortnite, they continue to bring like so much new content to their game. They continue to freshen it up and they keep bringing in new partnerships. They've had John Wick, they've had Avengers, they've had all sorts. And each season they bring in just gives you more things to do in game. You can't complain about that. And a personal favorite of mine was actually the Nike Jordan crossover. I've always wanted to wear a pair of Jordans while playing Fortnite. And this time I can do it sat at home and in the game. And not to mention the final, final one that they're doing right now is a Star Wars crossover. You can literally play as a stormtrooper in the game. Amazing. There was an amazing event during summer for Rocket League where they brought in all these throwback items that had all this 80s vibe to it, super retro. I think those kind of seasonal events are always really creative and Rocket League's was definitely the best by far this year. I think the best free content update of the year probably has to be Sea of Thieves. And the fact that they're continuing to add new elements, so they're adding volcanoes, they're adding ghost skeleton ships. More importantly, you can now have pets and how they're adding like complete whole quest lines to it. They've just got the pulse of the pirate on them. That's the, yeah, that, that's it. That's what they do. Xbox Game Pass delivers so many uh, incredible and unique experiences and we're really spoiled for choice, but if I had to choose one that I probably poured the most hours into this year, it's probably going to be Forza Horizon 4. Um, I love just the challenge of learning different seasons and how cars react to the road, whether you're in summer or like icy roads of winter, plus the fact that there are so many cars available. And the fact that the Eliminator DLC has finally dropped is just incredible. We get to experience a wacky Battle Royale version of Forza, which I never thought could be possible, but they delivered on it. Can't wait to jump into that more often. Uh, and the fact we get all of that included for free as a Game Pass subscriber is just mental. The one game that really surprised me that I did love was Astroneer. Leah and I did maybe two, three streams on that, so quite a few hours into it. And I'll be honest, I thought it was going to be a game that I didn't think I'd get my teeth into, but it's actually amazing. If you've not tried it, it's like a sort of survival, open world exploration game where you can terraform the world, you can explore different planets, you can mine for resources. Once you get into it, it is like really surprisingly addictive. So yeah, love that. If you've not played it, try and check it out. So the fact that a blockbuster game like Gears 5 comes to Xbox Game Pass on day one is like, it's pretty insane. So I think Gears 5 has to be my best addition to Xbox Game Pass so far this year. It's got like anything a Gears fan would want. It's awesome, so <laughs> easy winner. The best game on Xbox Game Pass has to be The Outer Worlds because it's one of the best games ever created in the last couple years in terms of story, graphics, comedy, character design, combat, everything. It's a truly superb, well-crafted, rounded thing. And it's just sat there on Game Pass for you. If you want to play it on PC or console, you can do. And fun fact, if you don't like it, you can just delete it. But I know you will like it because it's superb. Very, very good. What are we playing? The Outer Worlds. Oh, shrink them. Smaller. <laughs> shrink ray. So those are our picks, but we want to know what your favorite games were. If you have a battle royale you are fond of or a free DLC that we've completely missed, please let us know down in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe, head over to mixer.com forward slash Xbox on to watch our streams when we come back in January and I'll see you around. Bye. Bye.